So in this video, we talk about the linearity of expectation. So let's start with an example. If the average temperature in a certain city is 20 degrees Celsius, what is the average temperature in Fahrenheit? So basically, if we pick a random day and measure the temperature in that day, let's say we measure the temperature at noon and call that value x, then x is a random variable, right? Because it depends on which day you choose. And the question states that the value of x, we know that it is 20 degrees, right? If you measure the temperature in Celsius there and call it x, then expected value of x is 20. Now, the question is, I pick a random day, but I measure the temperature in Fahrenheit. So let's call it y. y is a random variable. And the question is, what is the expected value of y? Well, we know that if we have the temperature in Celsius, we can convert it to Fahrenheit. There is a relation between them. In particular, we know that y is equal to 1.8 times x plus 32. Okay? So, if I give you a temperature in Celsius, you can convert, convert it to Fahrenheit. Now, we know that expected value of x is 20, and the question is, what is the expected value of y? Well, we guess that probably we can write expected value of y is equal to 1.8 e of x plus 32, which is going to be 1.8 times 20 plus 32, which is going to be, I believe, 68. Okay, so you're right. If you do it this way, that is the correct answer. Basically, what you're using here is that if I have a random variable y, which is a function of another random variable x, let's say is a linear function, so y is equal to a times x plus b, when a, where a and b are fixed real numbers, then we can say that expected value of y is equal to a times e of x plus b. So in fact here, we are using the linearity of expectation. Expectation is a linear operation. So if I have the, um, you know, this is a linear function of x, and if I take the, its expected value, we can write the expected value as uh, a times e x plus b. Okay, so let's look at another example. So, here's the example. The average number of female students in a randomly chosen class at a certain university is 23, and the average number of male students in a randomly chosen class at the same university is equal to 21. Okay, so let's summarize the information. I have a random variable x. Basically, I pick a class at random, and I count how many female students are in that class. And we know that expected value of x is equal to 23. And then I have another random variable. Let's call it y. I pick a random class, and then I count how many male students are in that class. And then uh, I know that expected value of y is equal to 21. OK? Now I define a new random variable. Let z be the total number of students, I mean male plus female, at a randomly chosen class in the university. So the question is, what is the expected value of z? So I pick a random class, and then I count the total number of students. So basically, the number of male students plus the number of female students. The number of female students is x. The number of male students is y, as we defined before. So z is equal to basically x plus y. Now, the question is, what is the expected value of z? Well, again, z is equal to x plus y, so we guess that expected value of z should be expected value of x plus expected value of y. Basically, expected value of z is equal to 23 plus 21, which is 44. And that is correct. In fact, this is another general rule. If z is equal to x plus y, then expected value of z is equal to expected value of x plus expected value of y. So this is another important formula that we have. So the previous one was uh, if uh, y is equal to ax plus b, let me just maybe put the whole thing in the box. So that was the first formula. If y is equal to ax plus b, 
then its expected value is a times e of x plus b and then the next one is is if y is equal to x plus y then the expected value of z the average value is going to be x e of x plus e y okay we can state it as a theorem and the proof is given in the textbook the online textbook if you are interested to see that to see it mm, so if I have a random variable a x plus b where a and b are real numbers then its expected value is equal to a times e of x plus b if I have a bunch of random variables you know x1 plus x2 up to xn then uh, the expected value of their summation is the summation of the expectations so if I have a uh, a random variable let's say z is equal to 2x plus 3y plus 5 then if I want to find its ex ex expected value I can write e of z as 2 times e of x plus 3 times e of y plus 5 okay so let's look at an example to see how we can use this this is a very useful actually theorem now before looking at, at, an, ex at an example I should mention that this is uh, always true I mean so x1 x2 x3 and so on do not have to be independent for this whole formula to hold this is a very general formula it doesn't matter whenever you have two random variables x and y then expected value of x plus y is equal to x e of x plus e of y even if x and y are dependent okay so now let's look at the example x is a binomial random variable n and p and we want to find expected value of x so let me remind you of the binomial random variable the random experiment that describes or produces this binomial random variable can be uh, explained in this way I have a coin uh, for which probability of heads is equal to P right I toss the coin toss it n times and then I define the random variable X as the total number of heads And we found its uh, probability mass function before. Uh, we found that probability that x is equal to k is equal to n choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k for k equals 0, 1, up to n. Now the question is, what is the expected value of x? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video okay so let's solve this now one way to do this is uh, just directly applying the formula for the expected value if you remember we defined the expected value of any random variable as summation over all values of xk in the range of that random variable xk probability that x is equal to xk right the summation of all values times their probabilities this is the definition of expected value now we can do that well, right we can write this as k from 0 to n then k times the probability and choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k and you can you know try to simplify this uh, as you see there is a lot of calculation involved here however we can do this we can find expected value in a much easier way and that's what I am interested in here so to find the expected value I remember that I can write a binomial random variable as a summation of Bernoulli random variables so basically in if I have a binomial random variable x uh, binomial n and p as you mentioned you toss a coin n times and you count the number of heads right now each time you toss a coin uh, you can say that you have a Bernoulli uh, random variable in particular I can define xi a new random variable which is equal to 1 if the ith coin toss results in heads right and 0 if the ith coin toss it results in tails so xi is related to the ith coin toss now if I write x1 plus x2 up to xn what do I have you know this sum shows how many heads I have in the total n coin tosses so basically this is equal to x we discussed this before we said that a binomial random variable x can be written as 
sum of n independent uh, Bernoulli p random variables. So xi's are Bernoulli p. What does it mean Bernoulli p? Bernoulli mean p means that xi is equal to 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 minus p. So we can immediately apply linearity of expectation. Expected value of x is equal to expected value of x1 plus expected value of x2 up to expected value of xn. But what is expected value of x1? What is expected value of x2 and so on? Well, we can use this formula here. The expected value of xi is simply 1 times its probability, which is p, plus 0 times the probability that xi is equal to 0, which is 1 minus p, which is p. So these are all p equal to p. There is n of them, so it becomes n times p, and we are done. So expected value of x is equal to np. Very quick and uh, simple. And you see that if you want to you solve this problem using this method, it's going to take you a lot more calculations. And uh, this has also been solved in the textbook if you're interested in using this method. But as we see here, using the linearity of expectation, we could solve the problem in a much easier way. Okay, thank you.